All right, I know this is what most people think of when they talk about biology or when they talk about what they're interested in biology, and that is um, animals, right? Um, we have kind of been building up to this moment. Uh, we had our plant section, multiple lectures on that, and we're going to have spend as much time, if not more time, on animals and then kind of tie everything together with ecology. So first off, how do we define what an animal is? There are many characteristics which you can use to define them. All of them seem to have some exception, but generally these are the characteristics which we can use to define what an animal is. First, they are multicellular. Um, and to be multicellular, you also have to be eukaryotic. So there are no prokaryotic multicellular organisms. And they um, have a unique protein structure called collagen, which is a supportive structure found in many tissues. And um, most animals produce this. They also contain muscle and nervous tissue. Again, not all animals have tissues, but most of them do. They are heterotrophic. They cannot produce their own energy from chemicals or sunlight. So they have to consume other things and they reproduce sexually. However, some animals can also reproduce asexually. They also have a specific uh, development. So generally fertilization occurs between a larger egg and a smaller and motile uh, sperm with a flagella. And after fertilization, the zygote goes through uh, many rounds of cleavage where mitosis occurs. Okay, so here's our zygote. Uh, it goes through mitosis, but the resulting cells are no bigger than uh, the original zygote. Um, so the cells don't grow, they just divide and keep getting smaller and smaller. So eventually you have the formation of a blastula, which is like a hollow ball, but that's the same size as the zygote. That blast blastula then eventually becomes a gastrula. Um, where part of the hollow ball invaginates and uh, a gastrulation occurs where you have the embryonic tissues developing which eventually become the organs. Okay, so here is kind of um, all those um, stages together. You have a zygote, it's going through different rounds of cleav cleavage, eventually gets to a hollow ball called a blastula. That um, eventually becomes the gastrula and those are the different sections. The blastopore is the opening created by that invagination. Uh, the, the space in um, the invagination is called the archenteron. And then you have the endoderm forming and the ectoderm forming. And then this area between them called the blastocele. So there's nothing here but space or fluid. Okay. All right, most animals also have a, a larval stage, not all, and this larval stage is morphologically distinct to the adult stage. Generally, it's non-reproductive um, and may even have a different habitat such as these dragonfly or mosquito larvae. Um, and then they will metamorphosize an, into an adult and different uh, body type. Um, morphological development is controlled by a set of genes called Hox genes, and this allows for cephalization and um, other specializations such as appendages. All right, so animals evolved. We're going to do a bit of a timeline, similar kind of kind of picking up where we left off when we um, did the origin of life. So animals first occurred in the fossil record about a billion years ago um, and the common ancestor of all animals is uh, so proposed to be a uh, coanoflagellate which is a protist um, very similar to um, cells which are in sponges which is the, the basic the most basic or ancestral of all animals uh, so the collar cells or the coanocytes are very similar to the coanoflagellate uh, flagellate protist uh, cells. All right, so about 1 billion to 542 million years ago, 
we are talking about this late Proterozoic era, or also called the Neo-Proterozoic era. Um, and this is when animals first appeared in the fossil record. We then have the Paleozoic era, the Mesozoic era, and the Cenozoic era. And we'll talk about these individually. The Neo-Proterozoic era, again, all animals um, had very soft bodies similar to sponges or cnidarians or jellyfish. Um, and the first uh, animals are found within this um, era, 565 million years old, but it's thought that they must have evolved m much earlier than that. Um, these are just the first fossils we have found. And fossils found from this are called Ediacaran uh, biota. Um, and animal diversity from there continued to increase. In the Paleozoic era, this is where we have the Cambrian time period and the Cambrian explosion. Um, animal diversity expanded with evolution of hard mineralized skeletons. Um, this formed predator-prey relationships between animals. There was also an increase in oxygen in the atmosphere. And these Hox genes, again, uh, went through a dramatic change, allowed for even more specialized body forms. Um, and invertebrates and vertebrates both made the transition to land during the Paleozoic um, era, which allowed for a rapid diversification from there. The Mesozoic era, um, this is where animals diverged into many different habitats, including coral reefs, wings and vertebrates, um, specifically birds. Bats came much later. The first mammals appeared in the fossil record. Okay, here's a prehistoric mammal. Oh, excuse me. And flowering plants and insects also um, formed their co-evolutionary relationship and allowed for diversification. Um, this was also the age of, of dinosaurs as well. The Cenozoic era then, the mass extinctions of uh, dinosaurs and marine animals led to a diversification of other animals, including the rise of large mammals such as the mastodon and um, the uh, giant sloths, which used to go um, in North, Central and South America. Um, we also went through a cooling period, which led to many shifts in animal lineages. All right, so that's then our kind of brief history of, of animals through the last um, billion years. So animal body plans, so kind of going back to our, the development of our animals, um, are the set of morphological and developmental traits. And there are four areas in which we're going to talk about. Symmetry, tissues, body cavity, and in development specifically with protostome, and deuterostomes, which is a way we can classify animals. First off, we had symmetry. We talked about this in lab. Um, radial symmetry has one axis. You can split it in multiple different um, ways, and it will still be equal halves. It does have a, a, a top and a bottom, but it doesn't have a left or right or a front or a back. So a good example of this would be a cnidarian or a sea anemone. Uh, bilateral symmetry has two axes, so they have a dorsal and ventral side, or a top and a bottom, an anterior and posterior, a head and a tail, um, and they have nervous tissue centralized in one area, usually in the head, um, which is what we refer to as cephalization. Okay, tissues are very important to um, the diversification of animals. Um, tissues are collections of specialized cells isolated from other tissues by membranous layers, and they generally have the same specialized function. During gastrulation, three germ layers are formed. So we talked about the ectoderm and the endoderm, but we also have the mesoderm, which uh, develops between them. It gives rise to the muscle and other organs. The endoderm gives rise to the digestive tract and most other internal or organs, and the ectoderm uh, gives rise to the outer layer of the animal, such as the skin. Tr 
cripoblastic animals, so again, three, have all three ladder layers and are generally bilateral, uh, bilaterally symmetrical. Dipoblastic animals just have ectoderm and endoderm and are radial in their symmetry. Okay, so in humans, uh, our ectoderm um, forms our skin, hair, uh, brain, and spinal cord, and some of the skull bones, the mesoderm, our muscles, um, our blood, our reproductive organs, our kidneys, heart, and upper skull bones, and then our endoderm forms, uh, forms our uh, alimentary canal, liver, urinary system, um, and our lungs. And then part of our um, our cartilage in our neck. I think that's what that is. All right, so moving on to body cavity. So this is um, space within our bodies. So if you think of what you have in your, um, where your stomach is and your organs and even your lungs, they all sit in actually a body cavity. Okay, um, they're sitting in a space where there's air. You don't have a continuous tissue there. Um, tripoblastic animals have this fluid air field space which we call a coelom. And coelomates form their coelom from the mesoderm. And pseudocoelomates form from the mesoderm and endoderm. So you can see that here. Here's a pseudocoelomate. The inside part of the coelom is formed from the endoderm. The outer part is from mesoderm. Acelomates have no uh, coelom. And true coelomates, uh, the whole thing is derived from the mesoderm. All right, so um, there are these developmentally um, differences in protostome and deuterostome developments. Um, I will list these, then we'll talk about them in the, on the figure. So, protostomes have spiral cleavage, deuterostomes have radial, protostomes have determinant cleavage, deuterostomes have indeterminate, protostomes have their coelom forming from a split of the mesoderm, and deuterostomes from out pockets of the mesoderm, and finally the blastopore becomes the mouth in protostomes and the anus in deuterostomes. All right, so what does this mean? All right, so we're looking at cleavage. Having spiral cleavage means uh, one layer of cells, which then um, sits on top another layer of, layer of cells. Uh, the, I guess the separation between these cells does not lie on top of each other and is slightly rotated. Okay, so that's what spiral cleavage is. Whereas radial cleavage, the separations lie on top of each other. Okay, so that happens in deuterostomes and protostomes up here. All right, the fate of the embryonic cells, it's uh, determinant in uh, protostomes, which means that each of these cells has a specific um, tissue that it's going to develop into. And if you took one of these out uh, in this embryonic development, uh, it would not be able to mature. Its cells would not be able to mature. Whereas in deuterostomes, uh, it's indeterminate. So each one of these cells has the power to become all cells of the deuterostome body. So you take one of them out, this one can become a whole new individual, and so can all these three. Okay, so that's indeterminate. All right, the blastopore, which you remember was the opening formed by the invagination during uh, gastrulation. Um, that blastopore becomes the mouth in protostomes and that blastopore becomes the anus in deuterostomes. All right, and then finally the mesoderm, uh, the muscle layer forms from um, a out pocket in the deuterostomes. Okay, and then eventually becomes the coelom. In protostomes, it is a, um, a a separate or a split from the um, endoderm. 
and then that becomes the sea level. Okay, so those are uh, our, that's our introduction to animals, and we're going to use those to differentiate different types of animals. Okay, so here's a bunch of invertebrates, which we ha already have a reference point because we looked at them in lab, and we'll be quizzed on them next week. Um, and we have deuterostoma and protostomia, so we already have some things that should sound familiar. Bilateria, so again, it's bilateral symmetry. And we'll write all these other characters up on there as well.